This video is looking at spanning trees and minimum spanning trees in the context of network and decision mathematics for further mathematics. So firstly, what is a tree? So in networks, a tree is a connected graph which uses as few edges as possible. We can see an example here. So some key features is that our tree will have no circuits, no cycles, no loops, and no multiple edges. So back to the very basic. So think um, of an actual tree in the real world and we're stripping back all of the leaves. It is just the branches that are contained underneath. And so our tree should always only contain one face or region. So there's no closed in spaces. And the number of edges in a tree is always one less than the number of vertices. So if I've got 10 vertices, I'll need nine edges to make it a tree, a connected graph. And so a really common exam question is something simple like this, just testing your definitions. Consider the graph with five isolated vertices shown below. To form a tree, what is the minimum number of edges that must be added? So as we said, it's always one less so therefore it should be four edges, given that we are starting with five vertices. And so to show that, our tree, remember, should have no loops, no closed in spaces. So I needed a total of four lines to connect in each of those vertices. So it's all connected, but there's no closed space. Our second definition, so building on that, is what we call a spanning tree. So a spanning tree is a subgraph that contains all of the vertices, so every vertex from the original graph, but is also a tree. So we must use vertices, um, all of the vertices, sorry, but we must use the edges from the original graph. So we can't use or make up new connections that didn't already exist. And note there might be multiple spanning trees for any one graph. So before we go and draw it out next to the diagram like we have here, it may be simply that we're highlighting some of those key features and drawing ourselves a possible spanning tree there. So you can see that's an additional example other than the ones that have already been drawn. And remember, start by counting how many vertices are there and therefore how many edges do I need? One less than the five vertices, so therefore I need four edges in my spanning tree. Often questions around spanning trees will be like this. So we've got a multiple choice question where we've got our original graph and we're asked which one of the following is not a spanning tree for the network above. And so firstly, we want to make sure they're all trees. In this case, all five options are technically trees. We want to make sure that there isn't any additional information that wasn't in the original graph. So by, what I mean by that is we wouldn't want to see an edge connecting vertex 2 to vertex 4. So we're going to check each of these and make sure that the information they're displaying was contained in the original. So with A, we had a connection from 1 to 6, yes, 5 to 6, yes, 6 to 3, yes, 3 to 4, yes, and 3 to 2. So we can say that A is a spanning tree. When we look at B, 1 to 6, yes, 6 to 3, yes, 2 to 3, yes, 3 to 4, yes. This edge 3 to 5 didn't exist in the original graph. So B is not a spanning tree, okay, because it's containing different information from the original. If we go through and check C, D, and E, we can see they are all containing the same information that was present in our original graph. So we can confidently say that B is our answer due to that additional edge there between three and five. When we move into talking about weighted graphs, we then turn to what we call minimum spanning trees. So instead of there being many options to draw a spanning tree, when we're talking about a minimum spanning tree, that's where the total weight of all of the edges used to create that tree um, is the smallest possible. So we wouldn't want to use a large value connector or a large weight on an edge where there is a smaller alternative to join in 
um, that example. And so we have a couple of ways or a couple of methods to looking at that. And the most popular one is this PRIMS algorithm. And basically it is a set of rules that allow you to determine the minimum spanning tree. What PRIMS algorithm says is pick any starting point. So any vertex at all that you would like to start from. So I'm going to start at this vertex here. And then from that vertex, pick the shortest edge or the lowest weight edge that leads out. Now here I've got two options and I can pick either. So I'm going to take this value of two. The next step is then from either end, so either vertex that is connected, pick the next smallest value. And so that's where I can now connect in this second two edge. Again, from the vertices that are connected in, pick the next smallest edge. And so that would be the three. From here, again, the next smallest edge. I have another two edge here, so I'll use that. Again, the next smallest edge. From the end, I've got three. And I keep continuing with this process, making sure I do not ever close in, so I don't want to create a circuit, but I'm constantly looking back and checking what's the next smallest value that I could use to connect in my vertices that I need to keep connecting in. And it may be that you get to a point, so now my next smallest number is six, I've still got this one over here. So my next smallest number that won't create a closed space or a cycle or a circuit is the seven. And there I have my tree. I can check I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 vertices to begin with. And I check that I've only used, I should have only used 12 edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's good. Everything's connected, no closed spaces. The value of that minimum spanning tree would be the sum of all of those edges. Okay, so we would be adding up those values to get our minimum total. That would give us our total of 45. I tend to use a slightly different method and it gets us the same result. And I find it works better for me, but you need to use the method that works for you. So just quickly doing it on the same example here. I start out by looking for all of the smallest numbers. So two is the smallest weight in this graph. So I'm going to use the edges that have twos. And as long as they don't create a cycle or a closed shape for me, I'm happy to use all of them. Then I look at the next smallest number. So the next smallest number is a three. So all of the edges with a three, again, as long as it's not creating a closed shape, I'm okay to use that three. I go to the next number, four. And so I've got an edge here at four. And at this point, I then stop and think, okay, what are my vertices I still need to connect in? And what's the most efficient or the smallest way possible of doing it? So if I look at this one on the left, the edge is seven. So nine and seven are my two options. Seven is the one I wanna use. If I look at the one on the top right here, I've got a 10, a five, an eight, and a 12. So my smallest option is the five. And then finally, my far right vertex here, I've got two options. I've got a 12 and a six, and I'm gonna join with a six. Now at this point, I actually don't have a connected graph. I've got a gap between the top branch and the bottom. So the next, edge that I want to draw in is the one that's going to connect those pieces together. So I've got 12, eight or six. So six is my smallest option there. Again, I have only used the number of edges that are required for the number of vertices. I've got no closed shapes. And when I add that up, I get the same value of 45 as my total. And a couple of examples now. So a really simple, straightforward one, finding the minimum spanning tree or the length of the minimum spanning tree. So firstly, I need to identify which edges, and then I'm going to add the weights of those edges together to find the length. So use your preferred method. I'm going to start with my smallest edges. So I can see I've got two. The next smallest is three. 
Then I've got an edge of four. I've got an edge of five and a second one here. Now, I've, my next smallest number is six, but if I was to use that edge, I would create a closed space and that's not what I want. Same with the seven. So at this point, you might stop and say, okay, the two vertices that still need to be connected in, what is the smallest weight that will enable me to do that? So the eight here and also the eight here. And that allows me to have everything connected in. It's forming one tree together. And now I just need to add up my edges. So five, four, three, two, five, eight, and eight. And there I get a total of 35. A typical exam style question where they're not necessarily saying find the minimum spanning tree. So here's where we've got to read from the context of the question and identify which application we're using. So here we have the total length of pipe that supplies water from the pump to eight locations on the farm is a minimum. This minimum length of pipe is laid along some of the edges in the network. On the diagram below, draw the minimum length of pipe that is needed to supply water to all locations on the farm. So here we need to connect everything to the pump okay and so because it's a minimum we're using our minimum spanning tree so again using your preferred method to work your way through creating this minimum tree and then finding the length by adding the weights together so here i can see the smallest edge value is a 40 so i'm going to start by connecting my 40s and then I look for my next smallest, so I have 50. I've got two of those. My next value, 60. My next value is 70. This one would create issues for me, but I've got a 70 out here on the left that I can use. And at this point, I have all of the vertices connected in but I don't have a connection to the pump. So the smallest weight out of the two options, 90 and 80, would be the 80 that connects me to the pump. So I've got all of my vertices connected in, and you can check. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if you include the pump and the house. So nine locations, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges that have been used. Then to find the minimum uh, length, I'm adding those values together. So 70, 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 50, and 80. And all together, I get 430 as my length. The final question here is moving on from just simply finding the minimum spanning tree. So this one, a minimal spanning tree for the network includes the two edges with weightings X and Y. So on our diagram here, we've got one edge with X and one edge with Y. So they're telling us that's included in the minimum spanning tree. The length of the minimal spanning tree is 19. So we know the total. So now that we know those two edges are included, we need to find the rest of the edges that, are, that would be included in our spanning tree and then also work out then what must X and Y be? What must the values be? So let's start with our preferred method. So I'm going to include edge one, I'm going to include two, I'm going to include the three, and then the only other value or ed vertex I have to join in is this bottom right-hand side, and five is the smallest value there. So at the moment, my values I've got three two one five x and y and I've been told that that will equal 19. So here what have I got 11 so x and y 19 minus 11 must equal 8. So out of the options I can say well it can't be b 
because 2 and 5 is 7. Can't be D because 4 and 5 is 9. And it can't be E. 5 and 6 is 11. So I need X and Y to equal 8. Now, if X was 1, I would definitely have used it in my spanning tree. If Y was 7, so if Y was 7, you need to ask yourself, would you have included it? I'm saying I wouldn't because the way to connect in this vertex on the left, I could connect it in using a weight of 6 and that would give me a lower total overall. So I'm saying that A is not the correct answer. Whereas if X was 3 and Y was 5, I definitely would include those two edges to make my minimal spanning tree. So once you've worked out what options you can eliminate because they don't add up to what your tree needs to, 19, then it's about, well, if there are multiple options there, would you use those values if they were there to begin with and you had to create your spanning tree? And so that means that I'm saying C is the most correct answer here. Okay, that's it for uh, spanning trees and minimum spanning trees. Hope that was helpful.